Good morning, people of St. Paul's, on this glorious Easter morning. We share in this service together, which includes the Eucharist. I invite you to join in, if you're familiar, with the congregational parts and the responses, which I will also say. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia, o Christo o Vukile, o Vukile impela, Alleluia. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Praise the Lord. Praise him, you servants of the Lord. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be his name, now and forever. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Nkosi siao kele. Nkosi siao kele. Christu siao kele. Christu siao kele. Nkosi siao kele. In our time of penitence, let us confess our sins, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with our neighbour. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in penitence we confess that we have sinned against you through our own fault, in thought, word and deed, and in what we have left undone. For the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon your sins and set you free from them, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Collect for today. Lord Jesus Christ, you transform the tomb of death into the womb of new life. Make us joyful witnesses of this good news, that all creation may be redeemed, restored and reconciled. For you live and reign in the unity of the Blessed Trinity, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. So we have our Gospel reading for today. Listen to the good news as proclaimed in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 28, reading from verses 1 to 10. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb, and suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord, descending from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. 
His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the gods shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples. He has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message to you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. It's encouraging to be able to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus at this time, a time of practicing social distancing, of lockdown in our struggle to overcome the coronavirus. It is a time of uncertainty for the world. Today's Gospel account of Jesus' resurrection is a dramatic one. The story starts as the first light of dawn appears. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, probably Jesus' mother, go to the tomb, most likely to anoint Jesus' body. They're in for a big surprise. There was an earthquake and the appearance of the angel was like lightning. The first sign that the resurrection was to impact on everything, even the earth itself. None of life was to be left untouched. This was a frightening experience for those at the tomb. We hear that the gods shook out of fear and became like dead people. The angel says to the two women, Do not be afraid. Jesus has been raised. Words to these disciples, yes, but also words that echo through the ages to us today. Do not be afraid. Jesus has been raised. Things have forever changed, and for the good. 
The arrest and crucifixion of Jesus was a devastating experience for his first followers. Their world had come to an end. They had lost all hope. They were terrified of what would now happen to them. So you can imagine the joyful response of these women. They are told by the angel to go and tell the others of their experience and that they would see Jesus. They went quickly. The Gospel also describes the two Marys as still being fearful. They do not lose all their fear. But the good news of the resurrection sustains them. It gives them courage to continue. They experience the dawn of a new reality, of new possibilities. These women are surprised again when they meet Jesus on their way and they worship him. Jesus also says to them, Do not be afraid and go and tell others that they will see him in Galilee. The repeated message from the Gospel that we should not be afraid is a welcome one. We too are fearful of what the future holds. We may be worried about our health or livelihood and the health and well-being of others separated from us. It is a difficult time for everyone. We are grateful for the decisive actions taken by our government. We are most grateful to all our health workers who bear the brunt of the fight against this virus. We must pray for them. Later in this morning service, we will renew our baptismal promises. We are given the opportunity to recommit ourselves to God, the Trinity. We also make a commitment to live by different values. For example, we are asked to renounce the wickedness of the world, its greed for possessions, power and status, and all that corrupts our human nature, pride, selfishness and lust. Then we are asked with God's help, by our life and witness, to share in the Church's mission to proclaim the Gospel and to set forward peace and justice among all people. These commitments we make shape a new reality. They make for a more caring, compassionate and just world one centred on the common good of all. Like our baptism, the resurrection changes everything. Things can never be the same again. Through his death and resurrection, Jesus overcomes the principalities and powers of this world that deprive us of life and oppress and destroy what God has created. Through his death and resurrection, Jesus overcomes all that separates human beings from God and from one another. No part of life is left untouched. The personal, the economic, the social and the political. God's reign of love, mercy and reconciliation and freedom is what will ultimately prevail. Things cannot return to normal, and they should not. At the moment, staying at home can make a world of difference. And washing our hands has become a life-saving act. Small actions go a long way. We overcome the coronavirus one step at a time. We can all make a difference. That's good news. Finally, we are not alone in facing the future. In some verses after the ones we heard this morning, the very end of this Gospel, we hear the words of Jesus. 
And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Jesus meets us on the road, often unexpectedly. Jesus accompanies us. We are in this together. Let us not let fear overwhelm us. Happy Easter to you all. Amen. An important part of our Easter service each year is the renewal of our baptismal promises. And so I invite you to join me as we do this. Dear friends in Christ, today is the day which we have been praying for during Lent. We have come to know more clearly the love of Christ for us. On Palm Sunday, we went to Jerusalem with him. We followed him day by day until, on Good Friday, we st stood at the foot of the cross as he died for us in the fullness of his love. Today we rejoice in that great love. As we celebrate the Paschal mystery of his death and resurrection, we remember that at our baptism, we were buried with Christ and raised with him to newness of life. Let us now show our thankfulness by renewing this, these solemn pledges which were made to renounce the world, the flesh and the devil, to believe the Christian faith and to keep God's holy will and commandments. I ask you therefore, do you renounce the wickedness of the world, its greed for possessions, power and status? I yes, I renounce them all. Do you renounce all that corrupts our human nature, pride, selfishness and lust? Yes, I renounce them all. Do you renounce the devil, the author of all evil, and the father of lies. Yes, I renounce him. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, the maker of all? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in his Son Jesus Christ, the Redeemer of the world? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in his Holy Spirit, the giver of life? I believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Will you faithfully play your part in the life and fellowship of the church? With God's help I will. Will you gladly obey the commandments of God and seek to do his will? With God's help, I will. Will you, by your life and witness, share in the Church's mission to proclaim the Gospel and to set forward peace and justice among all people? With God's help, I will. Almighty God, who gives you the will to do all these things, grant you also the power to perform them, that he may complete the work which he has begun in you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So we turn to our prayers. In this season of uncertainty, the coronavirus, our prayers take on a new sense of urgency and meaning for us. And so let us pray together. Our Father in heaven, we praise you that on this day Christ rose from the dead. We thank you for his triumph over sin and death and for his gift of eternal life. We remember before you those who have died in the great hope of the resurrection. Unite us with them in your unending joy. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for ourselves and all Christian people that we may live as those who believe in the victory of, cross, of the cross. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless and guide all who govern the nations of the earth. Help them to know what is right and to do it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who suffer or are troubled, we pray. Give them good friends to comfort them and grant them healing and the knowledge of your Son in his victorious passion. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So as is customary at St Paul's at this stage, we think of those who have birthdays around this time or special anniversaries, and we pray God's special blessing on you all. So we come to the peace. This is the day which the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. The peace of the risen Christ be with you. Alleluia, alleluia. Peace be with you. Alleluia, alleluia. table has been set. We use the words of the first Eucharistic prayer. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and indeed our duty and joy. Lord and Heavenly Father, God Almighty and Eternal, always and everywhere, to give thanks through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord. And now we give you thanks for his glorious resurrection from the dead. By his death, he has destroyed death. By his rising again, he has restored us to eternal life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we acclaim you and declare the greatness of your glory. We praise you now and forever, saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hear us, Father, through your Son, Christ our Lord. Through him accept our offering of thanks and praise, and send your Holy Spirit upon us, and upon these gifts of bread and wine, so that they may be to us his body and his blood. For on the night that he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given you thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So too, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given you thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. 
So we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Holy Father, with these your gifts, we your people celebrate before you the one perfect sacrifice of Christ our Lord, his rising from the dead and his ascending to the glory of heaven. Gracious Lord, accept us in him, unworthy though we are, so that we who share in the body and blood of your Son may be made one with all your people of this and every age. Grant that as we await the coming of Christ our Saviour, in the glory and triumph of his kingdom, we may daily grow into his likeness, with whom and in whom and through whom, by the power of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour be given to you, Almighty Father, by the whole company of earth and heaven, throughout all ages, now and forever. Amen. As Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The bread which we break, is it not a sharing of the body of Christ? We who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, give us your peace. And so the invitation to receive. Sondelani niso kamokele umzimba when kosi yeto Jesu Christu awuni kalela nina. Nekazi lake ele pesela nina. Mama koleni izinchli ziweni zenu ingoko kolwa ni bonge. Our prayer book makes provision for what's called spiritual communion, usually given to those who are too ill to physically partake of the bread and wine. But today you may take a spiritual communion and be certain that Christ comes to you in the same way as he does in the sacrament itself. So to share in this spiritual communion, I invite you to say the words, Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. And so we conclude, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is gracious. His mercy endures forever. Father Almighty, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice in Jesus Christ our Lord. Send us out into the world in the power of the Holy Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. And so our final blessing, the peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. I won't tell you to go.
because you need to stay at home. But be in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. In the name of Christ, Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Have a wonderful day.